What is up you guys and of course welcome to another Vela Pokemon League battle week 4 versus Johnny Diesel and his Los Angeles Nita Kings versus me of course Scandinavian Southlands and Scarander. How about that? <laughs> anyway, uh, a quick review before we get into the matchup. Um, I do fend off against something I largely was expecting. Uh, my opponent here brings Go Guys, Mega Beedrill, Conkeldur, Jiranshi, Togekiss and Flygon. Uh, I really was thinking that Malorik, which also is to my opponent. Ross was gonna make it. It was whether or not which Pokemon he decided not to bring. Uh, though we are facing a largely different team when it comes to that, and Malloy isn't here. That also means that Jamai Jardos for this matchup is l l very effective since there aren't any Pokemon that actually fend that off directly. So I definitely was happy seeing the matchup, feeling that I should be able to do well towards this. Though, since Johnny is such a good meta player, uh, that's never a given win. It basically is just that I call myself a little bit knowing that. Um, I need to um, alleviate myself of room to gyros to be effective, and uh, yeah, it felt good at first. <laughs> so anyway, my team here is Tabu Coco with a um, combination of Dual Stab, Dazzling Gleam, and um, um, Dazzling Gleam and Thunderbolt with Toxic. Toxic is only the for Gore guys because Gore guys is his number one check towards um, Tabu Coco, and it's very effective at doing so. So I'm better off actually adding Toxic and fill it up is with Roost actually because it's bulky enough to fend off against a few of these matchups and I expect to do so. I'm modest and able to outspeed Tauros which isn't on the roster. Spirit Tomb, Adamant, Choice Bandit. Uh, this is a Pokemon is dedicated here to deal with Jirashi which I feel is tremendously annoying for me to deal with. Uh, so Shadow Sneak, Sucker Punch, uh, Pursuit and Switcheroo. Switcheroo is there for Target Kiss basically to kind of, I wouldn't say nerf it but rather lock it in and uh, since I'm banded it, it pretty much turns the Target is kind of useless. Um, Jardos, Leftover Set, able to have speed at plus well. Uh, to build out speed, Mega V drill. Uh, other than that, we actually have a lot of HP and a few attack points basically here to kind of become threatening, but I really want to spike on that leftovers recovery. Overall, Jaros doesn't fear anything in this particular matchup. While I could fear Thunder Punch and, of course, the likes of uh, from both Conkeldur and Yurashi, they really aren't scaring um, Jaros that much, unless, of course, you get uh, the heads up. But basically, what I've substituted here to kind of uh, passive recovery. Uh, Celestial, um, Scarf, able to speed a Scarf Tauros, which yet again isn't on the roster here. But it's basically here, it's, it's rolled, it's kind of force out Flygon and force out Tauros to be able to do heavy amount of damage. He really doesn't switch in well towards Celestial, and of course with Scarf and Beedrill is a non-issue here. So that's something that's really good. Uh, since it, he doesn't actually switch to that Pokemon really well. The only Pokemon that does that is Flygon, which is why we carry Hidden Power Ice. Mega Breed Drill, standard Adamant variant. Really um, nothing specs here, nothing's too tough. And then we have Sand Slash, which is our dedicated self rocker and spinner with Knockoff and Earthquake. Very bulkier variant of Sand Slash. And the reason I decided to actually go for that was. Um, Usually you don't want to cover yourself to have one Pokemon dedicated to both roles, but the other five really need to do something else this matchup, which means the Sand Slash kinda kinda fill that role. Like I said, it's usually not an effective way of being um to push your opponent back for stealth frogs and whatnot, but Sand Slash is fair in this environment and definitely more so when you know the other one needs to do something else. So really with all this said, uh, I'm gonna hope that he leads up with Jirachi which is a very good U-turn of Pokemon, and be able to pursue trap that early on. So with that said, let's start. Um, so we get the right matchup first, actually, as uh, my opponent here, of course, leads off with uh, Yurashi. And straight off the bat, it goes for U-turn, and we catch it on the pursuit. And we don't kill it, but my god, are we close, as <laughs> he'll switch into his Great Fairy. And I was fearing, actually, Thunder Wave, so I switched into Tapu Koko here as uh, my opponent here goes to Reckless for Air Slash. It doesn't do anything towards us, and I'm going to actually expect Gore guys to come in as a go for a Toxic. Unfortunately for me, I do miss the Toxic. It is to be expected, and uh, I need to switch out. And my easy switching is Celestial. I don't fear necessarily if you can do it. Of course, Will-O-Wisp is an aspect. Uh, so I'm free now to go actually for a Fire Blast, and I believe I do so. I went for Knockoff. Of course I did. And we see, of course, that this is a Sea Stone. So I switch in my Scissor, basically force it out. He goes to a Sword Stance. 
I unfortunately here forgot to Mega Ball and go for Bullet Punch. It doesn't matter though, um, it should be stated that Bullet Punch is a 2 hit KO <laughs> in the area here, so I don't fear the matchup. And while the crit, it didn't necessarily matter since it wasn't Mega Ball anyway. But Salazar will have speed, next turns at this card, go to him for eyes and boom, there goes the Dynamite and flying on his gun. So no setup there as he switches in the Beedrill. I can't do too much towards Beedrill, however, Sasslash is dealing really well with it. As my opponent goes for a knockoff here, so we do love lots of leftovers, but we can easily here actually get our stealth frogs off the field or on the field, which is really, really good. As um, Togekiss come in, and while I can't expect it to be uh, potentially defog, at least, you know, I've showcased that stealth frogs is something that I do carry. As um, really, this matchup isn't too threatening. Gorgas, as I stated before, is his easiest switch in, uh, but I like to go for Rooster, just expecting Dazzling Gleam. And uh, since we know now that there's leftovers, this means the wheel out speed, so Tabakoko will just pick up that KO and Yoraji is gone. So, running it, yeah, we're looking solid. We're looking really solid. Uh, Conkeller comes in. I'm definitely fearing that to be, um, what would I call it, um, a Assault Vest variant. Um, so, it was kind of fearing that. So, switching Stance Slash, and of course, now I'm fearing the Mag Punch with that in mind and switching Spirit Tomb, predicting that. Uh, get that prediction right, and um, I'm actually going to switch through here. Um, I know this sounds kind of weird, but I actually kind of want this Pokemon locked in as my opponent. Actually, luckily for me, I should say switches out and don't get the Choice Band, and I get the Barbira Berry. So, kind of cool. Definitely kind of cool as Coco comes in. Um, there is really, like, I'm in a really good spot now. Just if I get Yardos in, basically, I should have this in the bag as Peekaboo comes in. Uh, I go directly for, I believe, a Thunderbolt, and you know, I just I do fear damage. Uh, it just definitely is up there, but you can definitely synthesize that away. Uh, I am super aware of that, as I'm just going to bring Salasal, uh, and I should be able to actually just get a fair chunk of damage with Fire Blast on anything that comes in, and uh, my opponent here will actually optimize for Sloth and Conkelder, so I definitely fear this was um, some variant of a Soul Fest, but yeah, Fire Blast did a lot of damage, maybe not. As I can just keep on spamming Fire Blast, and I think my opponent kind of realized that he doesn't have a fair switch into his Fire Blast spamming. And while I do want to let it risk the Thunder Wave, I actually gonna just go for the Sand Slash and sag it, so I get a free switch in with Jaros. And uh, from here on out, like I said, there's really nothing he can do. Um, I actually go directly for Dragon as bringing his switch out, and uh, my opponent here goes for Air Slash. Definitely was fearing that he potentially could have gone for the Thunder Wave, but even at that. If one more Dragon has, I would secure a KO anyway. Uh, but my opponent doesn't have Thunder Wave, and Jardos get a very, very easy kind of setup here. And uh, yeah, basically, there is nothing stopping me here. It, it really is that simple. And it's one of those really, really scary moments where Jardos just works. Uh, I do have speed everything on the, on the team now, and uh, yeah, there is really no, nothing to it. I think my opponent here, to be honest, with not having. My Lord that going into this matchup really did have a tougher time dealing with the likes of Jardos. I wouldn't say he he misbuilt anything. I just think uh, he undermined that how big of a threat Jardos was. I think most of my opponents so far has kind of been afraid of Tabu Koko and tried to um, design a team towards that, forgetting that Jardos at the plus one really starts to show its brawn, and this is clearly one of the, these times yet again. I think this is my third sweep with Jardos, and I think that comes to show that if you're missing out on Jardos, it's going to bite you back, it's going to bite you hard, and um, if you play aggressive like I do, I think that's all that kind of speaks to it. Um, so we do score a 4-0 here, and as I said it there, I do believe Joey kind of slept on the Jardos when he started building, and it just brought down on him. And definitely a big shout out to Spirit Tube, who really, due to the Pursuit Trap, kind of, oh, how do you say, uh, opened up the opportunities for me of doing better, uh, because bringing Yurashi down definitely... Uh, took away some pressure from my team, and I do win this game mainly because I get a very strong momentum from the get-go, and it kind of just pummeled on there. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this win. Um, definitely felt like one of those situations where you just get the predictions right, and uh, the game just keeps gives you momentum. Um, I think without that, I wouldn't have been nearly as effective as I was, so I'm definitely not going to undermine, like I said, every Joey. I definitely think he just 
misbuilt towards Yardos and definitely over prepped towards the likes of Tabu Koku, which at the same time was just as effective. So I'm I'm definitely feeling what it was going in <laughs> going with acting into this game. But I think the, um, the battle turned out largely different than he thought it would. Uh, so that's it guys, thank you for watching and Johnny, GG as always, definitely always fun to battle you. Um, never looking forward to it for some reason, I always get stressed out because you're such a great meta player. This time is one of those times, which, like I said, that isn't showcased, but trust me, this is a very very tough opponent. Uh, so that's it guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care.